a wave shaper shapes waves. Today, you're going to learn how to use a wave shaper, which can do things such as make an 808 audible on a phone. To understand what a wave shaper is, first, you'll need to understand that it is a saturation or distortion type plugin. If you want to know more about saturation and distortion, click the video somewhere around here. Smash that like button like you hate it, and let's get started. First thing we need to understand when looking at a wave shaper is our input and output. This bottom here is going to represent our input. So if we watch that little line there represented the amount of volume coming in from our input device or our input uh, audio, which is the drums, okay? And much the same, our output is the up and down. So if you see, we have a straight up and down line here. That means that our input values are congruent to our output values. Now, if I expand this by clicking this little cool button, you'll notice we get this point in the center. I'll make this more obvious what happened when I expanded by moving that. See that? That's on both sides. So, What happens when we expand this is now this center point is zero, okay? Anything above this center point is a positive. Anything below this center point is a negative. And to show you that better, what I just did by dragging that little arm down on the one side was I affected one side of the waveform, which is the positive. If we zoom in, you'll notice these are waves going up and down. The center right there is going to be our zero right here in the center. Anything below that center is going to be the bottom there. So anything below this center point is going to be represented on the bottom. And then on the top, Anything above here is going to be represented on the top of the waveform. And so if you'll notice how I lopped the top off here, the top's lopped off right there. And that is the idea behind what the wave shaper is doing. So with that, we can do a lot of cool things. When placing points in the graph, the smoother the curves, the softer the saturation. So there we get some softer, more pleasant saturation. But with a harder curve, we start chopping the tops off harder like I showed you. And that's when it starts becoming distortion. All the way until we 45 it, and it just gets destroyed. Yeah, it wasn't a true 45. How's that? There we go. How's that for intense? And a hard right angle like this would be considered clipping versus distortion. You aren't getting as hard of a clip, but it was still pretty distorted. With our wave shapers, we're going to get a pre-gain because they're gain sensitive. So remember our input volume to our output volume. So that means the more we turn these up, the more that it's going to end up getting affected. right? Gain sensitive. So the cool thing about wave shaping is we can do what's called asymmetrical distortion. This means we can affect one side different than the other. An example, this wave where I chopped off one side really hard. 
Uh, we can do all kinds of creative stuff on just one side of the waveform, which would make asymmetrical distortion. Now, only the top of the waveform is being distorted and the bottom here is completely clean. If I wanted to mess with the bottom too, I could do something completely different. Kind of nasty and disturbing. In the same way that we did that, we can also flip the top of the waveform downwards, which is considered rectification. And in a visual sense, if we look at it here, we can now see we're completely missing the top of the waves, and all the top of the waves were brought to the bottom. That is considered rectifying a sound. Something cool is if we flip the other side, now we just inverted our wave. If we zoom in here, we'll see that every time this wave goes up, the one down here goes down because we flipped them. So this wave shaper, how we lop the tops off of the sounds, you would think it, you know, has a compressive effect. And it does crush dynamics. However, it doesn't quite tame volume. It'll actually take sound that you lopped off the top and move it up higher in the frequency spectrum. And so you'll get a more perceived loudness because of the, the new tones introduced in the higher end, which is why it's great for 808s. So, if we look in our equalizer, we can see that that's pretty stuck to the low end. As soon as we start adding distortion, you'll notice it starts adding high end. Let's make it so that the output is higher. Sure. We want to make it smoother. We can make it smoother, but regardless, we're adding upwards information. So the saturation or distortion will actually generally be perceived as louder, but it does squash the dynamic range. It just takes lower frequencies and it's like a piece of pie. And you're cutting out a piece of the pie and taking it away and you're just setting it next to it. There's still the same amount of pie. It's just not in the same piece or the same form it was before. So what did we learn today? Well, if you were like me in high school, we learned nothing. So hopefully you were not like me in high school. But if you are like I was in high school, I got your back. We're going to summarize pretty quick. Wave Shaper has an input across the bottom, output up and down across the sides. You place points in the graph, which tells it, hey, if we're getting to about this point of loudness, my output, I want it to be at this point of loudness. And that actually shapes and changes the waveform and the power of the wave. It's gain sensitive, so if you turn it up, it's going to start acting quicker. You can do asymmetrical distortion, which means one side of the wave is affected differently. You can do the normal saturation or distortion, where both sides are affected the same way. You can rectify it, where you flip one side of the wave down onto the other. And you're squashing your dynamics when you use these, so it has compressive type effects without really being a compressor. I mean, you wouldn't think such a little thing would be so powerful. That thing could almost beat me up. Please like and subscribe, that way more people see this, because if I go missing, the Wave Shaper did it, and more people need to know. If you have any comments, please comment. And this is Warren with Scale Audio.
Adios.